Good evening, guys. Hope you're all well and have tried to enjoy the weekend or what we've had of it. It's been a very, very wet weekend over here, uh, particularly in the south of the country in Blighty. But um, yeah, hope you're keeping well anyway. It's been a while since I've made a video. So I just thought, I just thought of something different. Um, I recently picked up, well, not recently, but a couple of months back, I picked up this five digit sea dweller. Um, I was looking, I've been researching a five digit Rolex for quite some time. Um, I've got two six digit ones. I've got the uh, steel and gold sub and I've got a steel and um, white gold Datejust 41. Lovely watch. It's a Wimbledon. And I'll put a video of those two soon. But you know, they're, they're very nice. They are big. They're not big, but they're a good size. They fit my wrist okay, but they are very, how do I say it? Kind of bling, blingy sort of watches. Um, so I was really reading and reading and doing my research. Um, I've never really, I've never owned a five digit, a five digit Rolex or a four digit. Not rich enough for a four digit anyway. So I've been best thinking and thinking and thinking, and I decided, look, I'm going to pick one. Um, so then it was a hard choice. It was um, the, the a normal sub. Um, 16610 or a two liner, uh, no date 14060M, or perhaps not the M, or the Sea Dweller. Um, I will do a proper th a thorough video on why I chose the Sea Dweller, um, and what why I think it was the best decision. Uh, but again, there's no real right or wrong when it comes to any five digit, I think they perhaps are Rolex at its, at its best, you know, um, in terms of everyday wearability, still having the kind of vintage, well, not fully vintage, but neo-vintage vibe, um, and just, they just fit so well, um, and, you know, they kind of fly under the radar compared to the newer stuff, um, and you're not really going to get your hand chopped off wearing this uh, versus a new sub or something with the steel and gold, a bit more. A bit more blingy as such but anyway going back to why i've decided to do this video um so i've been enjoying enjoying the sort of vintage kind of look well not full vintage but something that you can still use day you can still wear it you can enjoy it you can go swimming you can as you can see my one's a bit of a bashed up example it's not mint um it's had a polish once in its life it's got the drilled lugs which i love the drilled lugs you know i've been looking Practically, they're really it's really good to have. Um, yeah, I just it just sort of gives it that older kind of more tool. Watch. Well, I suppose yeah, that's part of what people call a tool watch having drilled lug holes. Um, this kind of has a more tool sort of vibe. Um, so I've been I've been enjoying wearing this watch, and then you know that got me thinking because. I do a lot of video, I mean I have a lot of, I have quite a few watches, all kinds of different types. And one of my favourite ones, or one that I think that is very, very, very cool, is the Black Bay Pro. Yeah. My opinion of the Black Bay Pro is, it's almost, obviously it's a homage to the 1655, the Freccioni, or Freccioni, as you can see here. Um, I'll put on my laptop, but it's not cheap. Um, I think prices have come down recently. They were about, on average, 27, 26 and a half to 27. Looking at this, maybe 20, they've come down a bit to 23 and a bit, maybe. Um, 22, there's one for 18.9. Well, so difficult to say, but again, not cheap. And being a four digit, you know, they're just, they're more to be enjoyed um, at home rather than put out into the wild um, where they, where they potentially get damaged and you don't want to damage a 20 grand watch, especially something old like this, where parts are hard to come by and, you know, you, you want to enjoy the watch as it is. It's perhaps more of a investment or something for you to enjoy rather than bash it about daily. Put it, they're a retired watch, I'd say. So that got me thinking, um, 
could could I or should I modify do some mods on my Black Bay Pro? Um, I've always thought the Black Bay Pro is pretty much you can kind of have your vintage your vintage cake and eat it as such. So you can it looks it's got the kind of faux patina. It's not too bad. It's perfect. It's, it's the right blend, you know. Um, and it's got a it's got a character to it. It's got a personality. It, it really does look cool um, when it's not when the sun is when it's it, it's it, it's a watch that makes you smile wearing it. Um, for those who've seen it, you, you, all of those who own one will definitely. I'm sure you could resonate with what I'm saying. Um, that um, the kind of the yellowishness is it's it's lovely. It's really really nice. So that got me thinking. Um, should or could I? Should I modify, do some basic mods to my Black Bay Pro? One of them being a Cyclops. Now, I know <laughs> not everyone likes a Cyclops. Um, I don't mind them. Okay, it's, the irony is obviously my Sea Dweller doesn't have a Cyclops. Um, it's the only Rolex, the only Rolex that doesn't have one uh, is the, the older Sea Dweller lines. But would it look good? with a Cyclops and then would it also look good with drilled lugs um, to give it that more of a that sort of more toolish vibe so I thought to myself you know look let's um, why don't we give it a go so if you look here I've fit, well I haven't actually I haven't made it permanent I've just bought one from eBay um, and I've just placed it on top but as you can see it's magnified at 2.5 times so it's the correct magnification for a Rolex um, but I've actually put one on I've just placed it on I haven't actually glued it or I haven't physically attached it but I thought to myself hang on it actually looks it looks good it suits to watch and the kind of at the um the faux patina the kind of the date wheel's always been really cool because it's got that kind of yellowy the kind of aged look which complements the the hour markers and the faded sort of gmt that yellow it it, it works well this style um and i just thought you know what let me try something different because obviously the freccioni beautiful watch but it comes at a price and it, you can't really use them but this the Black Bay Pro, it's not. You can pick, probably pick one up on eBay for about two eight two nine. Um, you get a new one three one seventy. I think they put the prices up. But you, I've always thought what what's cool about this watch is you can kind of have your vintage cake and eat it. You can get all that lovely look. You got two hundred meters of water resistance. You have a GMT. Um, you got your GMT time. Uh, your GMT timer. You've got your COSC certification, and this one keeps very, very good time. It's probably about plus one a day. So I was thinking, what would it look like? And I think it looks good. What do you think? Should I make it permanent, or does it should it come off? Does it not suit it? What do you tell me, guys? What do you think? I'm going to put it on my wrist now. Um, I have to be very, very gentle because it's not actually attached it's just sitting on there and it literally slides everywhere so give me a second let me put it on my wrist and we can kind of do some wrist shots with it here we are guys so it's on my wrist now and you can really see the kind of yellow date wheel um, the yellowness of the date wheel because I think without it, it it's there but you can't you can appreciate the yellow, the kind of colour a bit, but this really accentuates it um, by quite a bit. I think it's probably been smudged by my fingerprints, hence why it probably looks a bit um, cloudy, because it does magnify it quite a bit. But I'm pretty sure if it gets attached properly, once I get it done properly, um, you'd be able to see it a lot more clearer. What do you think? 
Does it suit it? Okay. Or should I take it off? I'm kind of like it. I, I, I'm kind of digging this. I do like it. Uh, it's an interesting one. I also think maybe another cool mod would be to drill some lugs in this. Some lug holes to really make it a proper... Just to bring it... Just make it... That, just give it that extra bit of that that little bit more of a vintage vibe. Is this what Tudor should have done? What do you think? Should Tudor have put the Cyclops on there? I mean, I have a Tudor big block, Chrono, and that's got the Cyclops on there. Um, and a, Ro a Rolex case back and the plexiglass. Um, I'll do a video on that one day as well. That's a lovely piece. Um, but what do you think, guys? Should I stick to this? Should I keep the Cyclops on there? And should I drill some lug holes? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. A couple more, um, a bit more time for you to sort of think what you reckon of it. I can't um, move my wrist too much because it will probably fall off and this little uh, cyclops is extremely small <laughs> and if it falls on the floor I don't think I'll ever find it again. There you go. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe and please comment, please subscribe. I'd be delighted to hear your opinion. Cheers.